So I have another drill that I want to share with you guys, and it's actually pretty straightforward. Now, many of you know that I shoot RAW and JPEG whenever I go out. And what I'm going to do is try and recreate the JPEG image from the RAW file. So I'm going to work with these two images here. This is the RAW file, and this is the JPEG by clicking on the raw file, holding down the shift key, and then clicking on the JPEG, I now get access to these menus over here. And I'm just gonna click on layer. And what this is gonna say is this is gonna combine the two photos into a layer stack in the editing module, which is exactly what I want, so I'm gonna hit okay. On one's gonna think through that, and it's gonna stack both of those images on top of one another up here in our layers. Now, if you're not familiar with layers, you can go and check some of the videos that I have linked in the description that will take you through some of the trainings that I've done on layers in the past, or you can just ask in the comment section below. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I am just going to double click here and rename this and then double click the bottom one and rename it raw. Now, to show you the difference between the two, I'm going to click on the JPEG, or I'm sorry, I'm going to click on the raw version of the file, and I'm just going to uncheck the JPEG version. So this is what the raw file looks like. It's very purple, and it doesn't look good, in my opinion. But this is the problem with editing raw files, and this is the reason why you get a JPEG straight out of camera. You're like, oh man, I'm in love with this. This is also what you're seeing on the back of your screen when you're taking the photos. So in your mind, this is what you want. And then you get the raw image into your computer and this is what you get. This happened to me a ton of times. It's happened to people that I've coached or I've worked with in the past. And they're like, I hate shooting raw because I don't know what I, I have to edit so much. And they're not wrong, right? Because if I got this straight out of camera, then I would be good to go and I would maybe make a few tweaks here. But the problem is I don't have as much tonal range that I can use to really enhance the overall image. So let's go ahead and figure out how we can make our raw photo look very similar to this JPEG file uh, or in some cases even better. So the very first thing that I, I'm noticing is this color shift. And the way that I like to work with color is first checking to see if there's a camera profile that's gonna work best for me. So I'm gonna mess around with, oh, well, I should probably turn off my JPEG preview and now move over here to these uh, different color profiles. And what I'm looking for is something that's gonna give me that vibrant contrast look. And sometimes you'll find that on one camera profiles look better than the actual camera or manufacturer profiles that come with on one. Uh, you, you just gotta kind of pick and choose. But I think camera standard actually looks pretty good. So if I turn this back on, you can see there's not very much color shift that's happening between the RAW and the JPEG. Now, there's a little bit more contrast and the magentas and the pinks are a little bit darker in the JPEG compared to the RAW file, but you know that's so minor in comparison to everything, I don't think it's a big deal. Now, what I am noticing is the RAW file, the highlights are just extremely bright. Now remember, I did mention that you have a lot more tonal range, and this is the reason why everyone says you should shoot in RAW. It's because you can build that exposure the way that you need to. Now, I personally think that pulling down just to about there is gonna be good, and if I turn this off and turn it back on, I know that I need to bring down the highlights in this area a little bit more, but since it's only in this area that I think needs the, the most adjustments, I'm going to go ahead and leave that for a local adjustment later in the process. So now what I need to do is figure out my contrast. The JPEG image, which is what I'm showing right now, it has way more contrast in the overall image, whereas the RAW doesn't. So 
what I'm going to do is pull up on the contrast slider and see what that does to the overall image. And if I pull it too far, you can see it just like darkens everything, makes it really green and not quite what I was going for. This is the JPEG. This is the raw. So what I'm going to do is slide this back maybe to about eight and then turn that off and turn it back on. And you can see I'm getting a little bit closer. The raw is just a little too dark. All right. So that's telling me that I need to probably look at opening my shadows and my midtones. So now what I'm going to do is do exactly that. I'm going to turn off the JPEG and I'm going to open up my shadows and that's going to brighten that background, right? Because there are shadow tones in the background. And as you edit more and more photos, you're going to realize where the shadow tones are and it's just going to come as like second nature. So there's shadow tones that need to be open. I'm just glancing back and forth. So I have my JPEG. This is the JPEG image. It's really bright and green in the background. This one is a little dull in the background, but all in all, I think the shadow tones came out quite well. So the next thing that I'm going to mess with is the midtones, and I'm going to pull up on them originally, and that's going to brighten the image way too much. So instead, I'm going to go the opposite direction, but not too much because, again, this is not supposed to be a darker image. It's supposed to be recreating the same image. So as you can see, this is a little bit more vibrant in the background here or even saturated because it's like I lose color. So that tells me now it's time to go into the vibrance and saturation sliders. So I always start with vibrance when I do this drill, mostly because I think that vibrance recalls colors and makes things look a little bit better than saturation does, especially when colors are already present in the image. So if I turn on the JPEG, now I'm starting to see, I like the colors in the raw file a whole lot more than I do in the JPEG. Like this little red area back here is not even nice in the JPEG in my opinion. But as soon as I turn on the raw, now you start to see other colors back here. Now that could be distracting to the eye. So maybe I could pull down on the vibrance a little bit. So that way it's not as strong. And so if I turn on the JPEG, you can see now the, the colors here are muted more in the, in the JPEG version than in the raw file. And again, this is the beauty of working in raw. You can really manipulate your digital negatives in a different way than you can a JPEG. Not to say that JPEGs are bad or wrong. I use them often and I even deliver JPEGs straight out of the camera to clients. So this drill is really just to help you understand what to do with global settings and then knowing when to do some of those uh, local adjustments, such as modifying these greens. So if I turn on the JPEG, you can see that the greens, they just have a little bit more saturation to them but I don't want to saturate the entire image. So what I'm going to do is come to effects and I'm going to use a color adjustment. You can absolutely use a color enhancer, but I'm using a color adjustment this time just because it's a simple tool and it's going to do the same thing as what I would need to do with the color enhancer. So when I select my green channel, all I'm going to do is pull up on the saturation until I see the adjustment and then I'm going to back that down. All right. And all this is doing is helping me balance those greens a little bit more, but it looks like the JPEG has more pure greens in the image. So now what that's telling me is I need to go to my yellow channel and potentially move my yellows over to the greens. And just like that, I'm getting closer to matching the two images. Now I'm seeing that the JPEG again, it just doesn't have as much vibrancy and I did put a lot of vibrance into the raw image. Uh, but ultimately I'm starting to get that look that I want to go for in the image. So now the last thing that I need to figure out is this highlight issue over the flower. And again, 
There's a few different ways that I could do this. I could modify it here inside of the tone enhancer and I could take a radial gradient like so, drop that over the top and we'll just pull down on the highlights and I need to invert this. So I am going to click on the mask here and then click invert. And now I am only impacting the highlights on the inside of the flower, but I need to resize this gradient because it is way too large for what I really want to do, which is kill the highlights right there in the center of the overall flower, if you will, and then kind of fade it out. So it looks a little bit more similar to what's happening on the JPEG. And I may need to contrast this a little bit so that way it separates and maybe even pull down on the exposure just a touch, all right? So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it's a very subtle adjustment, but it's a very necessary adjustment in my own personal opinion, because if I turn on the JPEG, you can see that the center of the flower is actually a little bit more sharp and concise. And then if you look at the raw, it looks a little blurry. So the other thing that I can do is come down here to detail and clarity. Let me zoom that down, okay? I can come to detail and clarity. I can pull up on the details just a touch and then maybe even pull up on the clarity just a touch as well. And now I'm starting to see that work a little bit better overall. So if I turn this off, turn it back on, and then if I turn on the JPEG, now what I'm also noticing is there's a little too much contrast and it's not gonna be perfect. But the idea here is to figure out how you can make your raw files look very similar to your JPEGs because that's what we're seeing on the back of the camera. And when you get into the editing room, they look very different if you shoot raw only. And that's why I always recommend shooting JPEG and raw if you can, if, if you can do it. Now, what size raw? You can experiment with that with your memory and things of that sort. Uh, but I personally use the largest raw file. I'm sorry, the largest JPEG file. And then I use either raw or compressed raw, depending on what I'm going for and how much information I really need to have in the image. Again, those are all things that as I go through my POV sequences, I'll explain what I'm doing with the camera uh, so you can understand a little bit more of what I'm talking about when I'm back here in the editing room. So with that, I'll show you the final RAW and the final JPEG. And what I like to do is click on the top image here and I will put a mask over the top here. And what this mask is gonna allow me to do, I'm gonna use a gradient mask. We'll just do linear left and I'll click. So on the right side is the JPEG and on the left side is the raw file. And the goal here is not to be able to tell the difference. If you are looking at this image and you're like, Chris, that doesn't look like you did anything to the image, then that means I did the drill properly and I'm being successful. The goal is that you make your raw files look just like your JPEG. So that way, when you turn off the JPEG, and your raw file is all that remains, you feel pleasantly satisfied with your overall image. Hopefully that drill was helpful. I demonstrated this in On One Photo Raw. You could do this in Photoshop and Affinity Photo as well. The only challenge there is those are not raw editors. This is a raw editor. So I don't know of any other program besides On One Photo Raw that allows you to do something like this so you can really learn more about editing images. So if you don't have on one, then consider using my affiliate coupon of Freewell Photos 20. It'll save you 20% at checkout when you decide to pick up on one photo raw. And the best part is you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. 
you can just go ahead and purchase a standalone perpetual copy and get all of the updates for that year's release with one purchase. So if that's something you're interested in, check the link in the description box below. It'll take you over to the On One website. And when you go to checkout, put that Free Will Photos 20 coupon in to save 20 at checkout. If you got questions, comments, or you know, if you've done this drill, let me know in the comment section below because I would love to hear that. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.